As you can see, I got Meteor Client here right now, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can use this client in depth. We're going to be going over all the ins and outs, and I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know in detail, of course. If you want the actual install tutorial, then I will leave that in the description below. Anyways, let's get right in. So the most important thing right off the bat is the right shift button. If you click on this, it is actually going to open up the menu with all the utilities in it. This is exactly what you want. So over here, as you see in the bottom left, there's going to be a few tips. So left click, which it will allow you to toggle the module and right click will allow you to open the module settings. As I said, we're going to be going through everything. So as it just said, I can click on this right over here and that is going to enable it. I can click on it once again and that is actually going to disable it. Now I can also right click on that as you can see. What I'm going to do is open up a module settings area. Here I'm going to be able to customize this to my liking. Now this one doesn't have a lot of customization but one that does have a lot of customization for example is ESP. As you can see I can open this up and I can tune this to my liking, which is perfect of course. Now there are a couple of things here too. Let's say I go to collisions and I'm not sure what it does. Well I can open up this menu by right clicking on it and I'll get a little description over here. Alternatively you can also get the description by hovering above it. As you can see this adds collision boxes to certain blocks or areas to your liking, right? So let's say I use this a lot. or I just went to bookmark it. Well, you can right click on that and keep this little star ticked. There you are. That way it'll show up in your favorites, which are right over here. All the utilities which are displayed are all categorized, really, which should allow you to find them easier. Or, alternatively, you can also use the search bar to search for not only modules, but also actually settings. Anyways, in here, one of the most important things in the uh, in the settings men in the individual settings menus for all these different utilities is the Enderman look, which, as you can see over here, it allows you to either look at all Endermen or prevent you from looking at Endermen. Let's say I want to enable this every time I go into the end. It would not be so useful if I had to go into here every single time, because keep in mind that this doesn't pause. because it only pauses the game in mobile, not in multiplayer worlds. So what I would be able to do is go on there and set a keybind. This can be done for every single utility. I can click on set over there and then on F. As you can see, the Enderman look is now bound to F, which means every time I click on F, it activates and then click on F again, it deactivates, right? Alternatively, I can also activate or deactivate it manually through this area right over here. If you don't want to get that little notification in chat, you can untick that or tick it again if you do just want to see it. That will be enabled by default. Apart from all the utilities over here, which actually, by the way, in this render area, you can actually scroll down just a slight bit. Um, it, you know, it, it's really a tiny, tiny bit, but it includes there the x-ray and the zoom which are two of the like most used things in this client so you know sometimes people try looking for them and they can't find them they're right down there as you can see in this area here there is a little bit of a more menu up top and what we're going to be doing next is going through that so the modules which we have over here that's what these things basically are then we can move on to the config, which is the actual specific config for the client itself. This will allow you to customize a bunch of mainly visual things, as well as allow you to change the chat prefix, which is used for commands, and I'll get to that later. Continuing with the GUI over here, which means general user interface, think of areas you see, like the play screen, maybe the pause menu, stuff like that. Um, 
maybe and the uh the meteor menu as well of course basically this allows you to change a bunch of cosmetic things as you can see it, it, it it's it's a lot so i'm not going to go one by one through these because that would just be a waste of your and my time here you can choose separate themes currently there is only the meteor theme but i'm pretty sure that you can import and download themes online as well of course watch out when downloading obviously right um anyways moving on to the hud which is the heads up display what the heads up display is is in vanilla minecraft it includes this um hotbar area over here your hunger your hearts for example basically all that stuff so currently i actually see nothing here i'm not sure if that's default or not but if i click on reset to default elements as you can see there we are, where I'm going to get some stuff on my screen, and I do actually need to activate it there. There we are, so now, as you can see, just some useful information. Top left, I have my frames per second, as well as other information. Top right, I have the Discord presence icon, and bottom right, I have coordinates and other related information. So, let's go back into this menu and take a closer look at that. So over here, I just have some visual customizations that I can apply here, as well as a custom keybind if you do want to be able to turn this on and off without having to go into this menu, as well as border and snapping, which is useful for the editor, which we're going to go into right now. So in this edit menu over here, um, we'll be able to access all of these things. I don't like the Discord presence icon. I can delete it by simply clicking on the delete button on my keyboard if I have it selected. Let's say in this menu over here, um, I like having my FPS and my ping and my speed, but the TPS and this Meteor client icon, I couldn't care less for those. I uh, didn't mean to do that. We can just click on delete for both those. I can move the FPS up and with snapping, which I do have enabled, I can move both of those right into place. There we are, that's great. And this, I like that how it is, so I'm just gonna leave it. All for example, right? So next up we actually have, um, in this area, if you right click, you'll get an add HUD element area. You can move this across the screen if you wish to do so. If you press escape, it'll disappear. Here you can add modules. If you're not sure what they do, you can hover above them. The armor module, what does it do? It displays your armor. Cool, what does the inventory one do? It displays your inventory. Cool, I can click on the plus over here, and as you can see, I have a slime block in my inventory. I actually prepared for this, guys. You're proud of me, right? Um, you should like the video, and subscribe, of course. Anyways, right over here, I can move this around anywhere I want. I can right-click on this as well. I can scale it if I wish to do so, reset it to the default with that button, and say, um, press on escape to close that. I want to have that down there, and now I can see whatever is in my inventory at all times without actually having to open it up, which is real nice. Once I've done editing, I can press on escape. We'll be back in this area. Of course, we can also clear it or just reset to the default if we wish to do so. Or, you know, escape, close this area, and now I can just see what's in my inventory. Anyways, continuing, we will move on to the friends area. Here you can just add custom friends inside of Meteor. It's all internal. Uh, you can just simply do that by typing in um, their username. Wow. Oh my, I'm not even going to try that again. <laughs> Anyways, um, moving on to macros. Here you can create and set keybinds, manage custom macros, um, which this client does support. And finally, in profiles over here, you can create and load custom profiles, right? Let's say I want to create a profile for every time that I kill or try to kill the Ender Dragon, right? The Enderman look, which we saw earlier. This would be very, very useful. So I'm going to have the mode set to look away. And there we go. That's it. Cool. I have now configured this as I want it to be. Maybe I've configured a few of these other things as well. Then I can go into profiles, create a profile, and call it Ender Dragon. There we go. Actually almost spelt it right that time. So, very nice. You know, I can now save this what do i want to save well i only edited modules so 
Really, I only need to save the modules. Click on create over there. And now I have the Ender Dragon profile. Fantastic. So that's it for this entire menu or this entire menu over here. Right now, let's move on to the commands for which I will actually go into the HUD and reset that so we can check out the chat a little more clearly. So as you see earlier, we got this chat message and in look bound to F and there's actually a lot more we can do. If you'll remember, we saw that the chat prefix was a dot earlier. So let's type that in and oh wow, we're getting a bunch of stuff. This dot works the same way that the slash would work in vanilla Minecraft, just for meteor specific hacks. By typing in dot help, I can get a list of all of the commands that this has. So, you know, that is pretty cool. I can hover above these and it'll give me the usage um, and some more specifications. So it'll enchant the item in your hands and in this case enchant requires creative mode. So bind, one of the most basic ones, a really simple one to use. Let's recreate what we did in the menu, but then with the enderman look. So I can type in chat dot bind because I know that's a command. Then as you can see, let's um, what is the usage of this? It binds a specific module to the next pressed key. Cool. So it's asking for a module here. I know I want to do it for enderman look. Cool. Then I can hit enter and then I can press the key I want to bind the module to. What do I want to bind it to? F. There we are. So now I can change and edit these these yeah, customizable functions um, for everything just through the chat, which might be useful for some of you, as well as actually being able to access things that are not options in this large menu over here. Anyways, basically, that was that. Um, Thank you ever so much for watching. If you do have any more questions or anything like that, then do free, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. For right now, though, thank you ever so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.